tiger Call me out, why don't you Lift me up higher above the clouds, won't you love? When the scenery is right, go right in. I want to fall deep within. Don't leave me hanging just cause I'm too proud. Whisper Well, it's a cloudy morning today, but I'm hopeful that sky will open up a little bit later. It's a bit windy though, which is always a little bit problematic when trying to photograph anything with wings because they, uh, they hide away in bushes and don't like to fly. So it's harder to see them in the clouds. And it's harder to photograph them in the wind, but you can only try. Just getting out here is reward enough, even if I don't come home with any photograph. Oh, the colors are wonderful. The colors are really wonderful this morning. And the sun's about to break. It's about to break. I'm about to get bathed in a shaft of sunlight. And where are my animals? Nowhere, nowhere to be seen. Let's try this way. The sun's gonna shine down like this. Sidelight them if I find any. Hopefully something like this pronking springbok, that would be wonderful. If only they would do what I wanted. Stop hiding. Well, I did manage to find some animals to photograph. Uh, they were guinea fowl, and they were distributed rather nicely over on a willow tree on my right as the sun was coming up. And the light's still good now. There's a lovely dark cloud in that direction and the sun in that direction. It's clear that I'm very, very rusty, having not photographed in so long. I was stuck between two places and it's common I guess. I wanted tight shots, sharp shots of the guinea fowl on the logs and the trees uh, just because they to me are one of the most beautiful and most iconic birds of southern Africa and that lovely morning light was glowing all over them. But at the same time they were coming down from roosting and flying into the grass and if I'd taken the teleconverter off this lens, changed it from a 560 f4 back to its native 400 f 2.8 with that wider field of view I probably would have got more flight shots and I think those would have been more impressive at the end of the day so I probably picked the wrong focal length there I tried to get the flight shots really tightly framed around the guinea fowl and I failed and how often do these opportunities come along very rarely I think 
uh, you have to really try to photograph guinea fowl, and nobody really does that because they're so common. But anyway, maybe some came out, and I can show you. I hope so, because the light was absolutely stunning. I'm filming a zebra foal here, just munching on the side of the road. Uh, I guess it's being weaned because it was eating a little bit of grass. But now I see it's, it's looking for its mother's teeth and looking for a bit of extra milk. It's a sweet little creature. Hopefully these videos are coming out. It's going to disappear into the grass in a minute. So it's, uh, it's not that big. So I walk across in front of me. Really nice to see these little animals being born and growing up here. So I'm really starting to notice the um, the issues now on this this 400 millimeter lens with the R6 and not having the ability to slot in ND filters because the the filter element on this lens is just far too big. It doesn't take filters at the front. So I'm really looking forward to the delivery of uh, the drop-in, Canon drop-in ND filter adapter. I think that'll really transform my ability to, to do video, uh, particularly with this really lovely lens. Uh, you know, I could just slot in the ND, do my video, change the strength of it, and perhaps start using it for both video and ND into the day, uh, video, sorry, and photography into the day. I was a little sidetracked there because there was a zebra doing a Fleming response in the grass, which is um, a nice photographic opportunity. And sadly, I don't have another adapter, so I can't shoot the R5 alongside the R6. Uh, so today is going to be mostly just a mosey around Rietvle, uh, enjoying getting back into things and shaking off the cobwebs and the rust and trying to learn how to photograph animals again, having not done it since November last year. Um, what is that? Ten months ago. It's a long time not to take a picture. Now one of the nice things about these R6 and R5 cameras is you can program them to have the shutter down when you change lenses, which for someone like me, in a place like this is a fantastic advantage. There we go. Just got to pop an ND filter on the end. We've got a much smaller form factor, nice zoom, much more appropriate for video. Cheers. just been having a little moment with a crested barbet, one of my favorite birds. It's one of the birds that made me fall in love with South Africa when I was a six-year-old and visited here for the first time. Really beautiful yellow and red and black bird. Very personable, great character, lots of bravado and confidence. And I'm sitting here amongst some dead eucalyptus trees. Eucalyptus trees are invasive, which is why they're dead. They've barked them to try and stop them growing in South Africa. But dead trees are a wonderful draw for birds like this. It's always worth just checking out perches on these trees. You can generally see that there'll be droppings uh, on the trees where, where they sit. And that's usually an indicator that these little places are favored by a particular bird. So a barbet would be one of those bird species here. A red-throated wryneck might be another. In this case, it was a barbet. And although I couldn't see it immediately, just stopping here, taking the time to have a cup of coffee and waiting 
patiently for the bird to appear allowed me to get some nice footage of it. It's a bit far away to get a decent photo, especially with this full frame. So I've got the two times extender on this 100 to 400, but a very satisfying experience waiting for something to appear and actually getting a clip of it. Starting my afternoon patrol looking for animals, and I've just spotted some beautiful ones out the left window. They're a set of Africa's largest antelope, the eland. They've got wonderful spiraled horns, they're bigger or as big as a pretty large cow, and they have clicking knees. They sort of look like ships walking through the grass. Huge animals. Can't hear the clicks from here. But the light hasn't really developed well enough over them yet to warrant a photograph. And they're a little far away too. But I know where they are. So if I can't find anything else in the next hour or so, I can try and come back here and see how they look with the sun a little lower in the sky. Uh, it's afternoon now at Reedflay. Uh, I've had a bit of a sleep and drove around, did a bit of filming. And I thought I'd spend the early afternoon from about three o'clock when the light starts getting better looking for raptors and, uh, you know, looking out for their, their normal haunts on the tops of trees, grooming themselves. I ran into quite a few, uh, a black shouldered kite first, then a, a couple of, a pair of uh, black chested snake eagles. Uh, they're probably breeding somewhere, so if I can find their nest, that might be a good opportunity. And then I came across another black-shouldered kite uh, perched quite close to the road and was set up uh, ready to try and get a shot of him taking off. It's funny how when you, you're concentrated on a bird, a particular bird, uh, and, and you're, you're looking at him. I was looking at him for about half an hour through the viewfinder, draining the battery on the R6. I, I saw him start to react to something. And out of the corner of my eye, my left eye, which is partially blind, so. I, I don't see too well over the top of the camera. I saw this sort of brown and black shape, flapping wings coming up the valley towards the kite. And it turned out to be a marshal. And uh, what a fantastic sighting, hunt hunting in the late afternoon. And I managed to get a few shots of him coming in to land on a tree, but I was sort of set up for video and 
for the kites and not really for the Marshall. But I think I got a few shots with the R6. I hope so. I was in electronic shutter, so I just jammed on the button there and, and uh, sprayed and prayed. But I'm going to keep driving up and down this road because a hunting Marshall is pretty nice to see in this kind of light. And perhaps he's still somewhere in the valley. That would be good. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get any more shots of the owl. I did see it briefly far in the distance, but it was just a no-go as far as photography or filming was concerned. So a fruitless hunt to finish off the afternoon. Now, being that this video is a, a first day out with the R6, I'd like to include some details about the camera, some likes and dislikes, but I'm conscious that not everybody on this channel is that interested in this camera. So I'm going to include that in a separate video, which I'm going to link here and probably post at the same time. It's just going to be a brief first impressions video for you if you're interested. I'll see you next time.